The oldest book written in the American continent is the Mayan Guide to Astronomy. Now, as the Mayan civilization was in decline, a diligent scribe was working on the oldest book created in the Americas. And that book was the Grolier Codex, and you're looking at a page from it now. The Grolier Codex, sometimes referred to as the Sanias Codex or the Mayan Codex of Mexico, is a screenfold book fashioned from bark paper, coated with stucco on both sides and painted on one side. Ten painted pages survive of a 25-page book. Yes. Formerly, they were judged to be 11 pages, but two fragments are now considered to be from the same page. The lower portion of the pages are badly damaged by moisture, eroding, and staining the bottom of each page. The greatest height of the surviving page fragment is only 7.1 inches. The average page width is only 4.9 inches, and you're looking at the most preserved page. Five single sheets of bark paper were found associated with the codex. They had no stucco coating and were brown and water-stained. Two of these had adhered to the codex, and the other three may have once been the codex, but has separated. One of these sheets has a painted line on the same red hematite pigment in the codex itself. And many people thought this was a fake. And that was because of some of the papyrus shelving, which was associated by the uh, astronomy here, or the archaeology. My, my bad. The lack of incrustations, incrustations or insect damage to the codex suggests if it is genuine, it was stored inside a container for hundreds of years and only switched hands since the advent of Columbus and those other schmucks. Now, the overall, it may be that the damage of the codex was deliberately decommissioned as a ritual object rather than being simply discarded. And this would mean that it was a ritual object up into the 1400s, and then when the white people came, it was discarded. Or... In their implementation of book burning and the removal history, they missed this one. That's my opinion. Now, there are odd discrepancies in the book's calendar system. Hinting that the forger might have been trying to intimate a calendar he saw in another Maya artifact. Unfortunately, this is not a forgery. <laughs> the drawings are so unusual for a Maya document, combining the styles of Mesoamerica and the Mixtec people, or the Toltec. Now, the Toltecs are people that have carved structures that we know about that have described uh, Afro-American, African, and Asian, as well as Caucasian people in their carvings. So the Toltec race was truly a worldwide race. Now, the Toltecs were often hailed by the Aztecs as ancestors, and their art shares many similarities with the late Maya art. Though carbon dating places the Codex bark pages during the late Maya period, it was not unknown for looters to find blank pages in ancient Maya caches and cover them in fake hieroglyphs to make them more valuable. But in the latest issue of Maya Archaeology, Stephen Houston of Brown University revisited the Codex and determines that it is the real deal. 100% authentic. The calendar discrepancies, he says, can be explained by regional or temporal variations in mythology of Venus. Electric universe much? The movements of which this 104-year-long calendar predicts. So clearly this ancient culture a thousand plus years ago had revered Venus as being a very significant feature in the night sky. Now, the codex is also found alongside other items that have been verified as authentic, and the format doesn't differ from sketch and grid lines seen in other Mayan murals. Lastly, some of the images in the codex are of deities unknown to modern scientists at the time of the discovery, making it more amazing. And it is, in fact, impossible for anyone to have fabricated it because there are gods that are here that are unknown. And all signs point to its legitimacy as the carbon dating suggests. Now, the codex is said to have been found enclosed in a wooden box in a dry cave in the highlands of Chiapas near Totuguera. 
It was also said to be found with a turquoise mask that is now in the so-called collection of Dumbarton Oaks. And not a single picture of that mask is available. So anyone that knows of that mask in the collection of Dumbarton Oaks, please send a picture my way. In 1965, Mexican collector Dr. Josue Sons was taken by two men on a light plane to a remote airstrip in the foothills of the Sierra Madre near Tutuguero. The compass of the plane was covered with a cloth, but Sanyas recognized the approximate location. At the airstrip, he was shown the codex along with some other looted Mayan artifacts and was told that he could take the items back to Mexico City for authentication before purchasing them. Now, the antiquities expert that Sanez consulted declared the artifacts were fakes, but he later purchased the codex and permitted Michael Coe to display the codex at the Grolier Club in 1971. And for 40 years, 50, almost 50 years, we've been left in the dark of this particular document. In 1976, the United States-Mexico Artifacts Treaty of 1970 was invoked by the Attorney General of Mexico, which resulted in the seizure of the Codex and its return to Mexico. Sanez donated the Codex to the Mexican government and is currently kept in a vault in the Museo Nacional de Antropologica in Mexico City, not on public display because, well, it's the oldest book that never got burned. So clearly, there are some hints in this baby. The claimed discovery of the Codex could make it the only pre-Columbian Codex discovered in the course of the 20th century, except for some Codex fragments, which are unusable, that have been excavated by archaeologists. In another example of ancient writings come to life, the oldest in our continent. This book is the most significant ever, and you've never heard about it. The oldest book written in the American continent is a Mayan guide to astronomy, and the Mayans claim that they are not from America. Solving the case of the Lost Mayan Codex involves you reevaluating everything. And everything you need to know about the Codex is right here in a paper. We are not indigenous. An introduction to the Maya identi identity of the Yucatan. The Maya claim that they are not indigenous. Where did they come from? Where were the pyramids? Who were the people, the megalithic people? These pictures are way too advanced for a hunter-gatherer society, in my opinion. If you think any less, well, please leave your comments below. I want to get to the bottom of the case. And the fact that is that the mainstream does not want me to get to the bottom of it. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance when the Mayans were not indigenous to South America. And the oldest book has been hidden from us as a fraud for 50 years. What say you? Well. History is a mystery. And the conquerors of nations rewrite it regularly. You're living a new rewriting of history, and I hope you don't think that's a mystery. Be safe. We love you.